Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Mind Minx Show. I am your favorite Mind Minx, and we are with Mix Vibes Radio, as we always are. And I have a great guest, but we have to do our homework. So I just want to give a shout out to the official sponsor of The Mind Minx Show, Absalom, located at 223 DeGraw Avenue in Teaneck, New Jersey. And of course, the Castro Beats for the amazing beat you guys get to hear in the background right now. And we did it. I didn't forget my homework. <laughs> I am so proud of myself. You did great. But I want to introduce an amazing artist, actor, and painter, especially painter. I'm loving that. Um, Josue Ledesma. Hello, sir. Hi. Thanks for having me. No, thank you for having. We are in his, your home right now. Yes. This is your private, personal space, and I feel very, very lucky that you know you allowed us into your yeah, space. Yeah, of course. Thank yeah. you. It was easy for me because I didn't have to move anywhere. So. <laughs> this is cool though. So if your favorite mind manx is in the city, which I love by the way. I love I, I hate when people are like, oh I hate going into the city. Why? I, I mean I live here. I yeah. I love it. You I, know. There's an energy being in this what like two square mile radius that Yeah. Yeah. You can't deny. I've been traveling like a lot over the last couple of months. Um, to different cities, so like New Orleans, Asheville, uh, Orlando, and like every time I come back, I'm like, yeah, this is home. Yeah, I missed, it's, I it's a it. different energy, yeah. especially, and it, that's a really good point. Like when you go to different cities, that's the best way to find out where it is that you feel. Yeah. But even with the traffic, everybody's like, you're crazy. I've been in, whether it be in Manhattan or the Bronx, um, in different parts of the Bronx, mm. literally in the past 72 hours, five different times. Oh my gosh. And I, I'll i do it every time. <laughs> I have no problem with it. People think I'm crazy, but it's okay. Well, let's talk about this. So you are an artist, mm. a book illustrator, an actor, a writer. Like the list goes on. Like how, tell us about Josue. Um, yeah, so it, it's funny, I feel like at the same time, I feel like I've been doing this for a long time and then also not enough time. Mm -hmm. So like I didn't really start painting or, or drawing or illustrating until I was like 20, 20, 21. Um, and I didn't take my first acting class until I was 20. Wow. Um, so this stuff came kind of like later than I would have. Um, but I, I I'm just like kind of restless and um, I feel like I always just want to do stuff and I'm always willing to say yes to a lot of things so I was able to like find a couple of cool opportunities and um, yeah started painting started acting and so this wasn't always like a passion of yours or was it a passion and you just didn't act on it until later on yes the latter it, it was something that I, I always thought about doing and I didn't give myself the permission for it. So like growing up, so so I moved here with my family uh, from Ecuador. I, I came when I was three. And like, I didn't know the language, obviously, like I knew Spanish. And I feel like the way I learned the culture in the States was through movies and TV. Mm -hmm. And like, I grew up watching The Simpsons. And I feel like that's such a very great display of like, America and all the good and the bad um, and the way me and my family bonded was through movies and like we'd watch like Jackie Chan movies and like Jim Carrey movies and like action movies all that stuff and I just loved it and like just growing up uh, with that like 
I always thought like, oh, I'd love to be on that side. I'd love to like be watched in that way because it, you know, there's a lot of joy that it, that comes with that. But there was never any opportunity to actually do that, or I, I didn't think so. And like in in high school and even even at home, I think not for lack of trying, but. Um, there was never any fostering of like creativity. It was kind of just like, you know, get good grades, find a job, like yeah. do it. And, and so I was trying to do that. Um, but in college, I ended I was studying creative writing. And two of my professors, I had a screenwriting prof professor and a playwriting professor, they're like, you should take an acting class. Like, it's good for your writing because you get to know what it's like to like read people's writing and like gotcha. perform it. So I was like, that's permission I'll take. I'll like, you don't have to give me another reason. I'll start taking classes. Okay. So I started taking classes at HB and it, I found a really good community. Uh, we immediately started putting like small shows together, um, uh, doing improv, started doing some short films. I joined SAG very early on, uh, way too early on. Okay. And uh, from there, I was I was always doing it as kind of like my passion project uh, outside of work because I was like you're still working. I, w I was like a full time um, in, in the tech world. Um, with painting, that came about a little bit differently. Um, so I, I, we can or can't get into this, but uh, I couldn't work immediately after graduating college. Um, and I was like, well, uh, what am I gonna do? And I was like, well, I've always wanted to draw. Like that was always like a thing that I, I liked. Like I loved um, video game art and magazine magazine art like if you look at like um editorial illustrations like abstract things or the way they conceptualize like an article i'm like this is super cool um album art was like always amazing so like i was like all right well i don't know how to draw so let me just learn so i like got a bunch of books picked a bunch of like reference things and i drew like three hours a day for like a bunch of weeks. Um, and then that became something that I was like, oh, I can do this and like maybe find, uh, again, I feel like I'm always looking for permission to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, I put myself out there on like different pa platforms where people hired me to like do that children's book or I started collaborating with artists or um, a super cool project I got to do was um, this guy hired me, um, to create images based on his engagement day. I saw that. Yeah, as part of like uh, his wedding. Um, and it was super cool. Was and like sweet. he sent me like a bunch of like memories and, and like scenes uh, with like reference material. And I was like, this is so sweet. Like, and then like, thank you for like picking me as the person to like make this stuff. Um, so I was able to like do stuff like that. and. Yeah, I think uh, over the le over the last couple like five yeah five years or so, um, things have shifted where I'm like working less and doing more creative work. Um, so I I feel like I'm in a in a pretty good place right now. So I came across your your LinkedIn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I found your LinkedIn. <laughs> That's my other life. <laughs> yeah. So I saw that, and you do some B two B marketing. Yeah. As well, and it came across the name of a company that I used to work at. Which one? Emerson. 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 Uh, was it but radio, or was it a different Emerson? That's what I wanted. Like this is this is how my mind works. I'm like, oh, Emerson, really? I Emerson. wonder. Like the microwaves and the. You know, it might have been part of Schneider Electric. Oh, okay. So, which is still yeah, down they were one path. of my clients. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah, like, yeah. wow, this is interesting. So, how did how did that create? Was that like before all the creative stuff, or integrated with all the creative? Because marketing is creative. I, that's what I was doing before. I have my my master's in marketing. Okay. So it was an interesting find for me to find your LinkedIn because, like, I think marketing is a very easy segue. I, I think that a lot of the skills I got in college, I was able to translate. I think it was like a combination of, of being able to translate the skills I learned in college um, 
being really lucky and also being like, who cares, I'm just gonna try this. Um, so I, I studied creative writing mm -hmm. and like some of the most, I think important and relevant classes were the ones that just taught you how to write well. Mm -hmm. So it's like about being clear, about like having a structure, about having a flow and that stuff, you ease, I easily was able to like a apply it to all sure. the writing I was doing in my like tech companies. Um, so when I, when I was able to get a job, um, I like found this startup that was like looking for a Spanish editor. And I'm like, I know editing <laughs> and I know That's Spanish. Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, let me try it. And I, I interviewed and it was this like 50 person company, brand new, like part of, like part of the initial startups in, in, in New York, because I think now New York is full of startups, but mm -hmm. uh, back in like 2012, like it was just starting to become a hub. And the interview, uh, I had the interview and they're like, so you, you did research on us, obviously. I was like, yeah, of course. They're like, okay, tell us what, what we do. And I told them and they're like, Okay, you're the only one who's been able to tell us. Oh, what I was we gonna do. say that was really good because yeah. I would have not. I would have been too nervous and figuring what I'm supposed to say about myself to have done. <laughs> so good for you. Well, I just I was like, who's this company? What do they do? And then I was like, oh, this makes sense. Um, and it turned out to be part of the reason that they asked that was because they were in a new space. They're in content marketing, which I think now is the norm for all companies, mm -hmm. less so then. And they were like, okay, come on, like we'll we'll hire you part time. And I was able to, to eventually go full time on that. And because I was in content marketing, which was like, I, I feel like it was the it girl of marketing. Mm -hmm. I was able to parlay that into other like, like really great jobs and also make a couple connections that then uh, would hire me as a freelance writer. Mm -hmm. So from, from like 2012 to like 2021, I was doing full time stuff, like full time job freelance writing, acting, painting. Wow. And then um, August of last year, I was like, I'm super burnt out. I got like shingles because I was so stressed oh, wow. out. Um, and I, I was like, I'm not doing full time anymore. I'm just gonna do freelance. We'll see how long that lasts, like how long the money lasts before I like move on to, to finding another full time job. Um, and it's, it's worked out. I haven't had to look for a full-time job yet because I got some clients that, that like really are, are keeping me on and like, yeah, I've just like built this like very fortunate lifestyle. I feel like I'm retired a little bit. <laughs> Good I like for you, though. Yeah, because I'm like traveling and, and, and it's really nice and I, I um, so that that's like my, my, my other life, which is all the B2B marketing. All the like, like I know so much about cybersecurity, which is like bizarre because I've been writing about it for like eight years. Um, but it never comes up. <laughs> and like, why would it, right? Well, same thing with me. Like, I know everything you need to know about B2B marketing. Yeah. Especially for, you know, painters, because that's, I worked for Benjamin Moore. Oh, super cool. Yeah, so I yeah. was traveling the country doing marketing for them mm -hmm. and setting up these events. So traveling, I guess maybe that's part of the reason why it doesn't bother me to travel into the city as much as I do. Oh, yeah. Like, I was here all the time. My problem came in 2008 when everybody got, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. I was let go, but I got this beautiful severance package and I was oh, pregnant nice. with my youngest. So I'm like, yeah, I'm staying home for a couple years to raise yeah. my baby. Yeah, oh yeah. You can't do that in marketing. <laughs> you cannot do that in marketing. So when I was ready to come back into the workforce in 2010, there was no, that's where we came in with like the social media marketing. Yep. Because that's when, you know, Facebook really started getting big. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm lost. I have no idea what the fuck to do. Yeah. It also became super specialized too. Yeah. Because like what, what you're saying about like traveling and doing these things, I'm like, oh, event marketing. And like, that, I feel like that's what it became in like digital marketing managers, the, the one that I, that I think is the broadest. Mm -hmm. But like, there's no like one person who does it all. Like you, you need like a sales and marketing, like product marketing, event marketing, content. Like it's it it has become so siloed now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that makes sense. What you mean. Oh my god, yeah. 
gosh, you experienced. Absolutely. Yeah, it was it was definitely not a space for me. So I completely well, I went back to school. That's when I in 2010 I was like, all right, I I like marketing. Yeah. I think it allows me to be creative, which uh, that's why I sent you. I tagged you in, in my because I like to paint also. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so a friend of mine had he's a, a graffiti artist, so he had tagged one of my canvases and I painted around. Super cool. It. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I think it's an interesting. As I meet more and more creatives like you, it's interesting to see all of that encompass yeah. itself. And it, it was it was fun. That's why when I saw your painting and you had done like a, a, a like a sped up video on your page. Oh like yeah. Painting. That's yeah. what like really. I was like, oh, I have to tag this <laughs> way of mine. Yeah, because it was something I did. So I when I first started painting, it was all digital, because the people that or the art that I admired, I found out, I was like, oh, nobody's painting this, it's all Photoshop. Um, or like digital painting. So they'll have like a tablet or like a screen where they'll, they'll, they'll literally paint on it, but it's through Photoshop. So I was like, all right, let me try and do that too. So like, that's how I got started. And like, um, a lot of my early work is, is digital. And like, I tried to make it look painterly, um, or make it look like I painted it. Um, but it wasn't until around 20, 2018, a little bit of 2019, but definitely 2020, where I was like, okay, I'm gonna like put the Photoshop away. I'm gonna start actually using like real paint and like acrylic paint. Um, and that felt, I was like starting fresh. I was like, oh, I can't undo, I can't like, <laughs> You open Pandora's box. Yeah, like I can't like mix. Uh, I can't be like, what does this look like? Blue. Never mind. Red. Never mind. Yellow. Right, it's like yeah. you lose a bunch of freedom, which mm. was, I think was very hard for me at first because I was like, all right, I'm like, this is a completely new way of working. Even just like the material was was different. Like you know, oil is different from paint. It's different from gouache. I was gouache. gonna ask, what's your favorite medium? I've only used acrylic, right. but like even just understanding how like a little bit of water does this or like painting on canvas does this, painting on paper does this. Like I was learning so much. Um, and then in 2020, you know, we were all locked down. I was living in Hell's Kitchen. I was like, well, I guess I'm just gonna paint. <laughs> I, so I mean that, that one that you saw, that was, that was during the pandemic. So have you ever taken any of your paintings and then, because there was one on your on your website, mm. under your, your personal work, where you, <clears throat> it's moving. So it looks like a painting, but it's, the, the pieces are moving. It's a, you're, I'm assuming oh, it's Oh, it's your, my face, yeah, 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 the gif, yeah. So, but is, was that something that, that you painted and then digitized? No, that, that's that was, digital. That was all digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Because yeah. that looked like the rest of your work. It didn't look like, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I like, I think maybe last year I felt really good about like, oh, my traditional painting and my personal digital painting are starting to overlap in like a really nice way. Yeah. Um, but it, it's all about like finding my voice. So, so that gif was like me playing with like, uh, all right, let me take advantage of like the digital medium. And so I like, you know, did, did the digital painting and then was like, how do I make a GIF? <laughs> and then I like had to research and then I was like, cause in my head I had it of like, it's my face and then just being like displaced everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it was, it was cool. It's a lot of work to do just like frames cause it's basically animation, right. which is something I've, you know, no surprise I'm also interested in, <laughs> but it's the kind of thing where it's like the amount of work that goes into just like making this five second GIF is like, huge yep. um and i actually prefer the the painting part um so i i really like uh doing the traditional painting and i wish uh i should do more of it well hopefully you get more time to I yeah love painting i but you know i'm just as guilty i have this beautiful easel that my parents had gotten me in high school and i still have it to this day and that's mm. you know the easel that you saw in the video okay and uh, it, it, uh, right now it's in my bedroom with this beautiful poster I got also when I was in high school, but it's not being used to paint on right now. Yeah. And so I, I get it, trying to find the time and that's a horrible excuse, but I get it, you know. Yeah, it's tough. I feel like, like I'm always asking myself, like, am I, 
devoting enough time to the things I, I say I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like painting or like uh, acting in self tapes or even like thinking about going back to class uh, for acting um, just to like, I don't know, either find, find the community or like just, you know, get yourself out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, but it's hard. I, I feel like that's the like, um, the duality of New York City where it's like, you can do so much and there's so much to do. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's not, there's not enough time in the day. Do you feel though that sometimes if you were to think about painting and, and it, or whatever medium, whether it be writing, do, do you feel like if you want to do it for your own pleasure, it's almost like, no, if I'm not working, mm. like has it turned for you a little bit like that? Definitely writing. So I, I do like zero creative writing anymore um, because the majority of my work, like pay the bills work is writing. Mm -hmm. And the couple of times I've like started like a short story or started like some kind of prose, I'm like, this just reads like my articles and yeah. it's so boring and it's so informative. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. no, I think, I think what I would like to do is start um, script writing a bit more because I feel like that's a little bit of a different, different than like traditional writing. Mm -hmm. um, with painting, honestly, it's like, I, I don't have that, it's just, I I feel like the excuse that I make is like, setting up to paint takes so long, oh God, yes. and if if I'm only gonna do it for 30 minutes, not, it's, not, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's not worth oh. it. And I should like, make it so, one, it doesn't take that long to set up. Uh, like, I've got the studio space for a reason, right? Um, or two, just be like, hey, if that's, if you got 30 minutes, you got 30 minutes. Like, mm -hmm. just do it anyway. Be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. Because I like to, usually when I paint, it's like in 45, like, 45 to like two hour chunks. And I'm just there and I'm just like, I'll put on like two, two, three albums of music and just like go at it. But if I'm like, ah, I only, you know, I got to run out of here in like 45 minutes, I'm like, that stuff. So for you, it's more like a, a almost like a meditative process. Yeah. Especially if you're putting on, the, you know, if you have specific music that you put on. Yeah, I think partly because the so so one so so you saw like my personal work digitally. Um, I feel like the digital stuff is like me exploring like cool things or like cool compositions or like trying to emulate some of like the, the other stuff that I, I drew inspiration from. Um, whereas a lot with, with my traditional painting, a lot of it is like very personal or like, it's like, here's, here's my emotion out on the canvas. So I think that that practice is a little bit different than like, I'm gonna make a cool monster. And like that's less, you know, less personal or at least less, I'm not delving so deeply emotionally, uh, where that's always the case with like my traditional right. painting. Yeah. Well, I lo well, your work is phenomenal. I definitely enjoyed looking through your your stuff. And, uh, yes, this is what I do when I talk um, <laughs> because it was it was fun, and I actually want to get an iPad because to see it just on my phone, it was so small, and you know, the, it was beautiful work. You really Thank you. do. Thank you. So. Have you ever taken any painting classes or this is just you, like any art classes, I should say? Uh, I took one art class in in college, which, which I didn't realize was helpful until like seven years later. How so? So when I, when I took art class, that, that art class, because that was my senior year, I was like, I want to paint like some of these guys who do these like super cool, um, like video game uh, art, like, I don't know, like the, the vampire, like killing a, a demon. And it's all realistic. It's all, you know, very much like it's figurative. It's, um, it, you know, they're trying to draw photo realistically um, in a fantasy setting. So I, I like came into art class and I'm like, that's what I want to try and do. Um, and my professor was very much about abstract. It was very much not that. Mm -hmm. And he would send us to like the Chelsea galleries and he's like, uh, there's an opening here or like this person's exhibiting their show. Uh, 
go to it, write an essay, let me know what you think, like, you analyze it. And it'd be like these abstract things or like, I don't know, like a panel with like two stripes of paint. And I'm like, this is like super boring. Like, like none of this stuff is like, like skillful or anything like that. And then when we would do, when we would do the painting, so we would have like the live nude, mm -hmm. uh, people models and then you know we paint I'm always trying to like paint exactly as it is that's how I am too and we would we would throw up all our paintings uh, up on the wall at the end of the class and critique them and the thing he always told me was like you you're painting too close to reality and I'm like yeah <laughs> that's what I want to do I'm like I feel like I'm not painting enough closely enough to reality and he's like, you need to find your way of seeing, you need to find your way of painting. Um, and we butted heads all the time. I was just like, dude, that's not what I want. And um, then, then like several years later, I'm like trying to find my voice. I'm like trying to find my style. I'm trying to like think about how I want to portray things. And like early on, I was always trying to be like, as you know, photorealistic as possible. I'm like trying to like get things exactly right. Mm -hmm. And you get to that middle point of like, it's almost like bad CGI where it's like, you're not there yet, but you're not stylized. So it just looks like you weren't good enough or you didn't get there. Right. Um, and then I was like, well, what if I just not try, rather than try and like paint it as real, I can just like do like a specific style or like, I don't know, find my own way of, of, of of seeing it, and I was like, that's what he meant. <laughs> uh, so, so that was helpful, but I, I feel like I, I so much um, pushed back on him where I like, if I think, if I embraced him, uh, what he was saying, things would have been a little bit different. But do you think you could have? Were you ready at that point to embrace it? Maybe you needed those seven years. Maybe. I'm an impatient person, so I was <laughs> like, nah, I don't know. I feel like you could, I think if I was more open to it, I think that's kind of like the lessons, like I should have been more open to it okay. because then I would have explored different things. Um, you know, that being said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change things. I, yeah, like, I like the I way think, it is yeah. now and like, yeah. So how did all that segue into your shorts, uh, you know, the, the writing that you're doing? Um, like uh, my, my acting yeah. and stuff. Um, well, well, oh, so what came first though? The acting or you writing, script writing? Script writing, because I was in class for script writing. Okay. Um, and but then then the the writing stuff kind of like took 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 a backseat because I was writing for work, so I was just mostly doing like improv shows and like sketch comedy. But I would only mostly be there as like the actor. Um, so that's how I met Isaiah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so shout out to Isaiah Seward yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and Michelle Westcott of Blue Eighty Two. I hope that they hop on. I told them I was interviewing you today. Um, but that's actually how we met. Yes. So, so you and Isaiah were taking the same improv. No, we're in the same, same sketch comedy group. Say, oh, okay. Um, yeah. So this was um, like several years, like into like my acting career. Like I'd, I'd been taking classes for a while, and um, my girlfriend at the time was in an acting class that that kind of dissolved but like a, a community like stayed and one of the guys there was like i want to i want to create a sketch comedy show um and he's like i want it to be like two teams doing three sketches each and like the audience votes and he brought in a lot of people from class um i ended up watching a bunch of those shows and i think isaiah was there early on um you know to support my my girlfriend at the time and also be like, oh, I did improv, so maybe I can do this. Okay, so okay. Um, I think after maybe like almost a year, I talked to the producer. I was like, hey man, like if you need anybody, like I'd love to like try it. And he's like, yeah, I think maybe there's like an opening in like a couple months, we'll bring you in. I was like, okay, cool. Um, because I was doing improv for like about two years. Um, and then we stopped. Uh, we stopped, so it had been like a couple of years before I was like performing again. Um, and then I, I got into this, this sketch comedy thing and I, I was like, 
I had such imposter syndrome. Oh my god. Because I, I felt like I was a decent actor. Not so much sketch comedian, um, or sketch comedy actor, which are like I think two two pretty distinct skills. Yeah, absolutely. So like the first, my first or se first and second time there, I was like, I'm just happy to be here. Just tell me what to do. Like blah blah. blah. Um, but people liked working with me. I liked working with them. I worked with Isaiah a bunch, and I I kept getting invited back uh, to do the show, and then I just became kind of like a regular uh, for about like four or five years. Um, so this has been going on for a while, though. It was, okay. yeah, yeah. So we we had to take a break during COVID. Uh, came back in 2021 or something like that, uh, or the end of 2020, uh, and then just like had a full year run, and then I I stepped away uh, in 2022. Um, but it, it like some of the most fun I've had like made some really good friends like Isaiah like made made a lot of great connections or Chris you know Chris was there mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um I love that guy he he was he was from there he didn't follow me back I'm just saying <laughs> he probably me. missed it because he yep. follows a lot of people <laughs> I know um, I saw <laughs> yeah and yeah it, it was super fun and like I I I think it was like a really good learning experience to again learning how to learning this other facet of being an actor um it's funny because like so so the way this thing worked was like uh every month you get kind of like drafted into teams so the teams were always different and you had to do three original sketches so you know we would rehearse maybe two to four times uh leading up to the show and Wait, two to four times and that's it? Or two to four times a week leading up to the show? Oh, two to four times, that's it. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. And, um, you know, there was like, I think so there's like usually six people on each team, so 12. And usually eight, eight people stayed the same every week and like we usually had like four new people come in. Okay. So you did end up being on the same team often. Okay. And one of the notes I always got in sketch comedy, they're like, stop acting. <laughs> they're like, be goofy. Like, it's okay, you can be stupid. I'm like, I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, I would be like, you know, I, how? It, I mean, I think I just had to lean into like the absurdity of it all. Okay. Cause it's like a fine line between like, so there's like, you know, you playing it, playing it like a real actor. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, the, that's one wrong way to do it. The other wrong way to do it is like, you lean into the comedy where you basically like wink, wink to the right. audience the whole time. Right. It's like, I'm oh. doing this thing. So and that's it's like, a really fine line. Yes. It's, it's, you gotta find the balance of like, you have to be real for the moment, but also, um, be, be somebody who lives in this absurd world. Um, and we would have like the, the stupidest sketches. So like, I I would have a lot of fun just being like, I can't believe I'm struggling with how to play this scene in this like stupid ass sketch about like yoga bros or something like that. <laughs> so it's- uh, And these are all original. So you guys had to come up with the ideas. Yeah, so we had uh, usually one to three writers every team. Okay. And so like Chris was one of the writers who like, Always, like every time he was on a team, like people would lean on him and be like, "Okay, you're, what do you have for us?" Um, I think throughout my my like four years there, I maybe wrote like one one and a half scripts. Uh, I definitely was like, "Guys, I'm just the face. Don't I'm not <laughs> just the a, face. I love it. like don't <laughs> lean on me for any writing um, because I like even if I would have wanted to, I feel like I, like other people were were really good at like the sketch writing." And, uh, and the competitive aspect, because you know it's two teams and then there's a winner at the end. You didn't want to be like, oh, let's just do this front. It's like, no, we got to win, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, there was like a little bit of pressure. Wait, what would you win if you won? Oh, bragging rights. Oh, that, that was oh, okay, that's the name okay. of the show, yeah. So it's just bragging rights. Uh, you, you get to win good, good feelings at the end of the night. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So <clears throat> you've written a couple of shorts that mm. have been in film festivals. Mm. How, how did that feel being able to, cause that's like a, it's, so I've spoken with a lot of musicians and they're able to compose a song, write the lyrics, produce it, master it. And some of them like all in 24 hours. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I don't know how the fuck they do that. I can't even, how long did it take you to? Oh my God, 
way too long. Way too long. <laughs> so, see, okay. So, I, I did, there are like three shorts where I had like a big hand in. Um, there was a first short that I collaborated with and it was basically, um, basically to get my SAG card because my friend was in it and he's like, if you do, if you do short with me, I can put you on the contract that just gets you a SAG card. Okay. And I was like, cool, let's do it. Um, and also I think that was the first time I was ever on camera. So like a lot of, a lot of the things I end up doing are like basically me asking the question, Hey, can I do this? Or like, how do you do this? Let me find out. So we did that short. It was like super quick and dirty. Um, what was really nice is super simple. One location, it was like uh, Washington Square Park. Um, one day, like four actors. We all knew our lines, we were all, all young and excited. And we had a pretty um, seasoned uh, video person. Like he, like that was what he was studying. That's what he graduated with. And he's like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot you guys. I'm gonna edit it and then we'll have it. So that was like, I was like, oh, that was easy. Um, so then uh, me and, and the other guy uh, were like, let's make something else for next year. So uh, we ended up collaborating on the script and we didn't have the same video person. And we're like, well, who can edit it? And I was like, oh, I can edit it. Let's see what, how it goes. Um, so, I, so, so we did it. This one like was like three locations, like multiple days. I'm like, okay, this is a little harder. Um, I was like storyboarding things because I like to storyboard. Uh, I was directing it too. And oh, I, I, director is nowhere on any of your pages. How come? Oh uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It should be maybe. Um, <laughs> you, you just said you directed it too. <laughs> yeah. It's on, it's on video. You said yeah. It. <laughs> I do. Cause I directed the next one too. I just feel like I haven't directed. So it's hard to oh say, my, so but I give you permission to put director <laughs> Okay. On thank you. <laughs> so the editing took super long and like, I, you know, there were like some script problems and I was like, this isn't that funny. I'm like, we totally missed the scene here that like we forgot to shoot on the other side. Um, eventually got it out and was like, okay, you know, that was a little messy. That's okay. Uh, a couple years later, I was like, I, I want to make this short. I want to direct it. Like I want to be like the sole creative person okay. here because the, the other two is a lot of collaboration, but I was like, what does it look like if I just do this? Um, and that's kind of like a question I always ask myself. So I wrote the script. It was like two people, including me. I reached out to a good friend. He had directed fe films, like features. I was like, hey, can you like help me out? Like, can you be like my assistant director? He's like, yeah, of course. So we shot it again one day, super simple, had the footage. And then editing took like, I don't know, like eight months. Really? Um, I was at the time, I was like such, such a slow editor. I didn't really know what I was doing. I, I would, I think I would not generally edit things. Um, because it's like, like, I just don't know what I'm editing for. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's a language that an editor knows, mm -hmm. like, especially on like the rhythm, the beats, even just like, you know, I've got this scene, I've got close up, I've got medium, I've got full body, which one do I use? Right. And the fact that I don't even know that is like, I think that's telling. So that took forever. And like, um, I think because I was like super precious about it, I was like, this is, all me if it's not good i can't like i have nobody to blame it's just me um so i think part of it was like a lot of fear but part of why it took so long um but it came out and yeah like that was the the only one we like sent at the film festivals because i was like hey, yours feel, your own yeah wow. i was like i feel good about this one um and yeah i haven't written anything since wow really um, what, when was that I was in 2017, 2018. Like I've written like little things, but nothing to shoot. Um, I, I I did take a directing film class workshop uh, last year, uh, which kind of like is is has stoked some fires. I do want to do it again eventually. I just like my big question is like how much do I involve myself? Because like 
there's a lot of ego to me where I'm like, if I write it, I want to be in it, and then I want to direct it, and it's like, stop, you did that last time, yeah. it didn't work out. Right. Um, but did it give you a, a sense of appreciation for the different roles that people play? In oh, 100%. The process? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's because I think there, those are things I eventually want to do. Like, like coming out of this stuff, I, I like learned, I was like, oh, I'd love to be a director. Um, that would be really cool. I do not want to be an editor. <laughs> that would not be cool. That's an easy you know, one to Love figure. acting. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, you know, if, if I'm writing something or and or if it's personal, I'm like, yeah, maybe I do want to be in it. And it's like, do I also want to direct me? Slash like, if, you know, you are being pulled and spread thin if you are like in it and then directing. And it's like, you just aren't seeing things in the way a director would who's not in the scene. Right. Um, so it's stuff like that, but you know, well, well, those are projects for the future, I guess. That's interesting though. That's an interesting take on it. I do have a, I wanted to ask you, as you've been both on stage uh -huh. and on film. Yeah. How do you feel the two differ? Because um, I've, I've only ever been on stage. I've never been on film yet. I'm saying yet. Hey, I mean, what is this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this counts. But how do you um, feel it differs? I think like it differs a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it differs by genre and it differs. There's like so many elements that I think play into it. And like, you know, so people ask me, they're like, oh, what's better? What do you like better? I think it depends. I think for the most part, I like comedy on stage as opposed to comedy really? on cam in camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, because comedy on stage, like you, the satisfaction is like immediate. Like, you know, you, you hear, hit, you hear hit you're funny. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, it's laughing and like, you know, you're like, okay, we did this, like this is funny. And like, that's why the sketch comedy show was like so much fun for me. Um, I think partly because the big difference between on camera and on stage is like, on stage, it ends with you. You are the last thing before the audience like sees it, right? Like the audience is there, it sees, they see you, and like the, the thing is done. On camera is like you do your part, then the editor comes in, and the sound mixer comes in, and like CGI comes in, and like all these things right. come in. Right. You are not the last step. Right. Um, and that means the the connection to the audience is a little bit different. So like on like. I've done a little bit on camera comedy and it I always feel like I'm like I'm not funny. Like nobody's laughing, I'm not funny. Like how do you know? But mm. you, you gotta trust and or and I think you have to like know that I'm thinking at I'm thinking of it as like a, a stage actor of like ah oh, nobody's laughing, I'm like I failed. Um, so that's usually why I, I preferred comedy on stage, but I do like drama on camera i feel like um i like doing that stuff like it, it's super fun but it's it it is hard it, especially in the beginning it was hard to like connect um because there's so many other things like uh in your space it's mm -hmm. like like i like i had like an intimate scene uh, on a short that i did last year where it's like i'm like kissing multiple people and it's like everybody's watching it and there's like a bunch of things and it's like okay I was like all right well I have to think about like how this is gonna go and like how I'm gonna feel but I think that's where like a lot of the training comes in okay. um, and I think acting acting actor to actor does not feel very different from stage to camera because okay. um, I think especially when you're like really in it like all that stuff washes away, whether it's the audience, whether it's your camera person, whether it's your sound person who's like got the mic right here, mm -hmm. um, all that stuff really washes away. So th I think that's where there's a lot of similarities, but it's like, it's just like dealing with the, uh, dealing with the external like non-acting parts that make, make the differences between stage and, and on camera. That's it. It was an interesting conversation that I wanted to have because I, I feel like well, first, one thing that I hear everyone say is that when you're on stage, like you, you can't say, fuck, hold on a second, I forgot my line. <laughs> nope. <laughs> which is, which is it's funny because I wanted to bring this up and that was a beautiful segue. 
you have this blooper reel on your page. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Is fucking hysterical. I love it. And it's like, fuck, I'm sorry. This is that's literally what you say. I'm like, fuck, I'm sorry. I, I curse a lot when I fuck up. I'm just like, fuck, goddamn it. <laughs> but we then you hear it because sometimes you don't cut it off yet, and you hear whoever's in the in the background. Like, it's okay. Yeah, they're always like, it's all right, it's all right. And I'm like, no. <laughs> um, but on you know when you're filming, you're able to. So is it? Do you feel it's difficult to learn your lines? Generally. Yeah. Like um, like how how is it that of a process? It's changed a lot over, over the years. Um, it used to be super hard to memorize for me. I think, you know, that's because it's like the first time we're doing this, it's like, it's hard. I'm like, oh, I've got to like memorize all these words. Now it's like very easy where I can like, I get an audition, I get I get the sides. I'm like, hold on, let me do this real quick. Let's run it real quick. And I'm like, okay, I got it. Um, really? Yeah. Wow. I think that's because of practice. But also, I I think about it differently. When I was when I was first starting out, I was thinking about the words, and then the emotion, and like it was like almost like lockstep. It's like you do this, and you feel that, and you do this, and you feel that. Um, and I don't think that that makes for great acting on my part because it, it it's very like kind of planned out, mm -hmm. and like I don't know, robotic almost. A little bit, yeah, mm -hmm. but. That's what I thought I had to do to memorize. Cause I was like, oh, the words need to come first. Now it's a little bit of the opposite where it's like the emotions come first and the scenes come first. And then it's almost like, well, all these words make sense. Like, this is what I would say. And it's almost like, not it, like it in a weird way doesn't feel like memorized. It just feels like, well, no, this is what I would say. Okay. Um, and it makes it, it for me, it makes me more in tune with the scene and more in tune with, with like the acting. Um, and it also lets me play with stuff because I think now um, I'm less I'm less concerned about the actual words and I'm more like concerned with like is my emotion am I connecting to the emotion and am I playing the scene and the objectives and like sometimes the words are different right. like because uh, I have a lot of people who help me with like my self tapes and stuff. Um, we'll do a scene and I'm like, I, I like that one, let's keep that one. And they're like, you changed all these words. I'm like, it's okay. <laughs> I was gonna, that was gonna be my next question. Do you find yourself in, in improv, for lack of a better word, mm. improvising the words if you can't, because it's still, you're right, the emotion is still there. Yeah, sometimes, like, it, it depends on each audition, like where I would feel like the character is somebody who Maybe says a little bit more, says a little bit less, or usually says a little bit more, because you don't want to just take out words. Um, so there, if it's like a long speech, I will like maybe add a couple of things, or just like, it, it just like whatever is coming Naturally. out. Naturally. Yeah. Um, sometimes it's like very specific, which is where you'll see like a lot of the bloopers where I'm like, <laughs> fuck. fuck, I was like. <laughs> That's my favorite. Ah. This so I'm gonna like share that shit because you guys need to see it. Um, it was hysterical. Yeah, and I think now, it's funny, because like, so, I, I think I've, I've put out like seven blooper videos by now, uh, and it's usually like every four or five months. Um, I haven't put one out in a while, because now I just like run with it, because now I'm like, hey, I'm just gonna go to the end with this scene, and I'm not gonna like care as much. Um, I will only really stop myself if it's like, you forget somebody's name or something like that. I forgot my own name. I forgot my own name. <laughs> I was like, hi, this is Sally. And I guess I'm not reading anything. And then I stopped. <laughs> yeah. I My favorite are like <clears throat> my slate bloopers. And I'm like, hi, my name is Hope. And I'm like, I'm like come on, you like you're doing <laughs> you're, this. You can't say your own name. Yeah. Or like, I think one time I was like, hi, my name is Josue Ledesma and I'm from New York City, New Jersey. And I'm like, <laughs> What are I you doing? <laughs> um, yeah, so th th those that are my favorite. That would be great. Yeah, those are yeah. great. But um, all right, so I really want to talk really quickly about the day that we got to meet. So um, our friend Isaiah and Michelle, they have their own production company mm -hmm. now called Blue 82. Why didn't anybody tell me I have this thing sticking up from the top of my head? Oh, I thought it was. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I digress. I have, I have self-diagnosed ADD. <laughs> I'm blind as a bat, but I saw that on screen. Nice. Wow. Okay. 
<clears throat> bringing it back. All right, so we got to be a part of uh, something called 10 Minute Podcast with Isaiah, Isaiah Seward yeah. um, with Blue 82 Productions. And we met in this really cool place, space, downtown. Yeah. Was it downtown or were we up? Downtown. We were downtown, okay. Um, and we got to come up with three topics mm -hmm. that we couldn't tell Isaiah about, which is super difficult because I have a memory like Dory. <laughs> and if I don't tell somebody my topics, I'm going to forget yeah. what they were. <laughs> and so I kind of went in there and you said, we, we talked about it when I first got here, mm -hmm. you kind of did the same thing, you, you winged it. Yeah. So what were your topics? Because um, we'll see, because I winged it, I like, don't really remember right. as much. Aliens? It was like... Was the Aliens was yours? No, that that was, I think, Chris's. Was Mine Chris was and... like, what do you think about superhero movies? What do you invest in? Uh, astrology? No. Somebody what talked was about my astrology? last one? I was one? so upset that somebody brought up astrology because that could have been one of mine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love astrology. And I forgot to do the cinnamon yesterday. I forgot my third one. What it was like short. It was a shorter one. I can't remember what it was. Well, we're gonna have to wait until they're. Yeah, it was investing. Done. It was like superhero movies, and then. No, I can't remember. I can't. I'm trying to blank. I can't remember any of them at all. But so. My topics were. Um, can a male and a female actually have a platonic friendship that doesn't have any sexual tension? What was your opinion? So, yes, they okay. can. And that was just by experience. But I understand <laughs> people who can't, because I used to be the people who can't understand right. that, until I actually had a platonic friendship that there's zero. Right. And second topic, I forgot the second topic, but my last topic was, um, do you feel comfortable to fart in front of your significant <laughs> other? <laughs> and that that's the, the, the shot that they have that's by Zayla really laughing. Great. Yeah. yeah, that's really great. Oh, I can't wait to see yeah, that one. Yeah, so I'm excited for that. But they, that, so I wanted to shout them out. Do you know we've been talking for an hour already? Jeez, really? Yep. That was see? a blast. Thank you. Yeah, that happens really fast. All right, so we're gonna play a game though. Okay. We're gonna play a game called Six Degrees of Mind Links. Okay. And you're gonna name somebody, can be anybody, preferably somebody that I can figure out, and I'm gonna have to connect myself to them in six degrees or less via you. Okay, okay, interesting. Um, so I just saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I'm late. Um, so I'm gonna say Leonardo DiCaprio. Leonardo DiCaprio, oh, okay. I have to think about this for a second because he was in a lot of movies. Oh, yeah. So, you guys can help me, by the way. You're 100% can help me. He won't because he's an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he likes to see me suffer. You guys can help too if there's anybody watching. I thought he was nice. So, did you meet him? Oh, you th him? <laughs> yeah. Get to know him. <laughs> um, let's see. Leo. Gosh, this should be easy because he's acted with everybody. I know, I feel like it's 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 should be super too easy. easy. It's like you got all these choices. Well, let's see. But I have to use you have to be my first connection. So I know you. Okay. And you've worked with But am I guessing here? Because you've worked with Isaiah. Yeah. Who's been on New Amsterdam. I was thinking, yeah, he's been on New, New Amsterdam. Amsterdam. And the main actor was on Blacklist, right? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, he was the boyfriend on Blacklist. Yeah. And James Spader has acted for fucking ever. He's got to be. Could somebody Google if James Spader ever acted with Leo DiCaprio? No, but he was in, oh my God. He was in the Avengers Ultron. With? He was. So who from that movie has worked with Leo? Mark Ruffalo? Mark Ruffalo with Leo? Um, and what? Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. And who's in the Avengers. Yes. Who's worked with Leo in Django Unchained. There we go. Six degrees or less. Yeah. <laughs> High fives. 
I'm connected to Leo DiCaprio in six degrees or less. Yep. Amazing. I should rewatch Django too. Wow. See, this is where like knowing the movies really helps. <laughs> I I consider it as like the best homework. I'm like, I haven't watched the movie this week. I have to watch a movie this week. It's part of my career. Yeah. And it's it's. My okay. Favorite. You know, I think I agree with you because I usually don't watch TV, and that's mm. like my. And you would think that people would be like, oh, that's a good thing. You don't watch TV. But now that I've started, you know, dipping yeah. my toes in this world, I need to. Yeah, I think so. You know what my favorite show is right now? Mm. Murderville. Oh, my God. Have you I seen love it? that oh show. My, I love I'm sitting there yesterday. That, I'm supposed to be getting for my, ready for my high school reunion. I'm sitting there laughing my ass off. It's so funny. I, the, the Annie Murphy one is hilarious. Conan O'Brien was hysterical. Oh my god. Conan, yeah, Conan <laughs> O'Brien and the uh, Kumail Nanjiani. His is super funny too. Yeah? I yeah. don't know if I've gotten, I've only, I think the first three I saw. So I saw Conan. Yeah, I think he's later, yeah. Um, Marshawn Lynch. Yeah. And, oh, I don't know his name. He's Indian though. He was fucking hysterical. Yeah, yeah, him. I oh, that's him? him? Yeah. Oh my god, that was so fucking funny. hysterical. Um, so, <laughs> After you get through that, they did a Christmas special. Oh, did they? Yeah, and it's like an hour long. I was, I was, I was like peeing my pants. It was so funny, oh so absurd. I don't know how. So it just started, by the way. So I googled them. It's only their first season. It was in 2022. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It says brand new. So they they don't even have a thousand followers on their Instagram yet. So we need to get <laughs> on there right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So wait. No, I thought that was Michelle. <laughs> I can't see to save my life. All right, so thank you so much. Thank you. I, I talked so much and I never. No, that's where can everybody find you? That's the one thing I always forget to do. Where can everybody find you? Yeah, so you can uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's uh, Josue .a Um I've got two websites. One for my art, which is josueledesma.com, and then. Uh, one for my acting, which I've not updated in forever, which is josuealedesma.com. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think Instagram's probably the best way. I'm on Twitter, but I never post, so. And LinkedIn. And LinkedIn. LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you need, exactly. a, if you need a writer. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, this was, this was great. I, I had a really good time, really great conversation. As, this is actually a lot more personal for me because I, like I said, I just started dipping my toe in all this, so this, I'm definitely absorbing all of this information. So this is great, thank you very much. Yeah, of course, I'm here if, uh, if you need uh, any advice or to... We have that on camera now, so. Yes, <laughs> any advice, happy to help. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. It's a brand new week, so go own it and mind your favorite minx and join us next time. Good one.